It's time to get our Dodge shifter wired up to our turbo Lamic harness so we can go ahead and get this whole mess installed in the car. Stick around. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and you would think this portion probably wouldn't need to be done but I'll be honest with you I've been looking for the connector that fits this for a couple weeks now. Uh, oddly enough Max ECU sells it like 20 bucks I think 15 bucks and I was just going to order it from them but that didn't seem like a viable alternative to just finding the actual connector so I've Spent a lot of time digging around, measuring things out, and I finally found the connector. It's a TE connector. Manufacturer part number is 638393-5. I'll put all that down below. Uh, it's just called a 10P plug assembly A key. And then the pins for it are 571. No, wait, that's the Mauser part number. The manufacturer part number is 638551-2. Once again, I'll put all these down in the description. Uh, connectors, maybe $2, pins are 10 cents a piece. So I think all told I spent $10, but I had it shipped two day, you know, air. So it came a lot quicker to make sure it got here by this weekend. So if you buy an 8 HP harness for the Turbo Lambic, it's going to come with a BMW 10 pin already terminated on it. This will be necessary in order to get your Dodge. The cool thing about it is if you go over specifically to turbolambic.eu, not the American one because I don't think their links work as well, there is a online manual that shows you the wiring pin out. And we've got five wires going into the tin connector. We only need four. The difference is this one has a 12 volt battery coming from the TCU and a 12 volt ignition source. The Dodge only requires the 12 volt battery. So the gray wire in this case that's in the middle, we will cap off with some heat shrink and, and wrap it up or something. Now, We've got four wires left in this case, green, brown, white, and yellow. White and yellow are going to be our CAN bus. Um, let's see here. It looks like the CAN signal low is our yellow, white is our high. We'll need to keep that in mind whenever we go over to the Dodge series. Then green is our power and brown is our ground. So looking at our Dodge, They've got wiring diagrams for all of these. Uh, it's in the same order. So green is going to go to pin one, brown to pin 10, and then high to pin four, low to pin five. So those are flip-flopped. We need to pay attention to that. Let me find something to write on so I know which is which here. High is white, H is white, low is yellow. That should be the only thing I need. So let's go ahead and cut this off. I'm gonna cut this as close to the connector as possible, leave myself enough slack to assemble this thing. And then I've got a piece of heat shrink here. I can throw on our gray wire because that's the one we don't want. Hopefully this is small enough to seal up on the gray wire. Yep, that should be good. So we'll kind of rearrange these and let's get our power and ground done here first. Pull our pins out, take a look at what size they are, get an idea of how far back we need to strip. They're going to be uh, press strips. So it looks like we're going to be using our small. There we go. 
this one. Okay, I think this will be our 22 to 24 pin. And we're going to have two crimps on here. We're going to have one for the wire, one for the insulation. So we don't need much stripped for the insulation. Just a tiny bit off the end. Kind of like you'd tell your rabbi. Okay, we'll go ahead and reef these wires. Get a nice twist on them. And throw our pins on there. So you'll have to crimp these twice. I like to hit the wire side first. And usually I'll put it in my crimpers and line it up. And then try and feed the wire in. Make sure that we're getting good wire. Crimp that one. And then I'll do the insulation. Crimp that one. Tug test. Not the cleanest, but that'll work. This is why I prefer the barrel style better. Getting the insulation side crimped on these sometimes, especially on these smaller terminals, is pretty hard, but there shouldn't be much strain on this. I'm not too worried about it. As long as we got a good crimp on the wire, the only thing that might end up being a problem is often whenever these things get crimped a little funky, they don't like to go into the connector very well. So there we go. We've got our power and ground. So let's go ahead and just do our cam bus. And this is so small, you guys probably have a hard time seeing it. I apologize. I'll try and zoom in as much as possible on this process, but there's plenty of guys out there show you how to crimp, crimp these connectors on. Just make sure you're using the proper tool as always. That's the big thing. Don't just grab needle nose and smash these together. They'll just end up coming back to bite you in the long run. So let's do this one. And last but not least, our other CAN bus line. Come on. Get in there. Okay. Oh, I'd already pulled one off. I thought one fell off already. It's like, we're not off to a good start. So let me find our connector here. As I said, this is the elusive one. And we will look at the pinout diagram. And honestly, on the side of these, there's numbers. So this is one, this is six, this is five, this is 10. So look at the side connection profile. And I'll pull up the pin out. And ground is going to 10. Power to one. So our brown was our ground. There will be one direction that these go in and one that they don't. So you may have to flip them upside down, right side up, all that jazz to figure out which direction they go. Okay. There's only one direction it's going to slide in there though. So here's what I'm talking about. This thing's not wanting to clear the back shell or the crimp on the insulation. Wherever that happens, let me grab some tiny needle nose. Sometimes we have to massage it. And we're good up until we get to the insulation crimp. So I'm just going to kind of smush it together a little bit, try to make it fit a little easier. There we go. Okay, our ground is home. 
So let's do the same thing. Give a little smush on the insulation crimp. And do our power wire. There's the orientation it wants to go. Okay, it's going home now. So close, get there. Okay, click. So now we have to do our two CAN bus lines. I'll go ahead and get the insulation crimp on these since the last two didn't seem to go through. And this insulation section is for strain relief. That's what that crimp is for. In case you were wondering, should be good enough. So white is our high, which goes into pin four. So pin four is right here. It's upside down. Let me turn that over. Come on, get in there. Man, working on these tiny connectors makes my hands hurt. Four. Why are you not going in? Go in your home. There we go. Okay, that one went in easy. And then our yellow one goes into terminal five. That one went in easy. And then we just pushed the gray back into the lock position and our connector is now done. Now we can go in, plug this in to our turbo lamic to shifter and our shifter is going to be good to go. There will be a couple things that we have to set up on the software side whenever we get to that point, but for now the harness is ready to go in it and be installed. There's probably a couple spare leads on here that we don't need. We've got a bunch of flying leads that we talked about in our earlier video. So we'll go through and any of those that we're not gonna be using, we'll either remove from the harness or, or trim back and tape out of the way. I'm gonna get back to it. I'm gonna jam all this stuff into the car and get ready to wire up on the car side of it. I just wanted to do a quick video about this connector because I was having such a hard time finding information on it. As I said, part numbers will be down below. I ordered it off of Mauser. It was here in a couple days. As I said, less than 10 bucks. So here's your solution if you're using a Dodge shifter with the Turbo Lamic. Listen, everybody, you know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.